Attachment is a disease that we mistakenly label as love. It gives us the illusion of being in love, but it's not love. Rumi said it so perfectly that your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. I am Chandresh Bhardwaj and this is Break the Norms. Hi everyone, it's been a while since I recorded a new podcast episode. I think the last one I recorded was before I left for Himalayas to teach my retreat. and uh, i pre-recorded few of them and um, it's been a while i've been back in us uh, i'm traveling within us but nothing international uh, for now and i wanted to wait for a week or two before i could record my next one and i wanted to record with something that's been buzzing around me a lot lately which is attachment I think this is a topic that continues to show up on my Instagram DMs, on uh, my emails, my websites, because every other person is going through a relationship challenge. And um, hopefully the episode today will reflect on those challenges. And if this episode resonates with you, definitely send more questions uh, through my website, cbmeditates.com. And hopefully I'll address those questions uh, directly in one of the future episodes. and those who have been asking about the next retreat i'm not doing the india retreat for now i'm going to give it a little break uh, but i'm teaching a two day meditation retreat in california that's happening on valentines weekend uh, 14th february 2020 at 1440 multiversity so if you're around definitely you know join me that's going to be a very powerful deep meditation in you know, order retreat for 3 nights in 1440 multi university and i'm teaching a workshop at the den meditation la in november november 22nd that's going to be on cultivating the conscious desires and the links of all of these events are on my website cbmeditates.com so let's get started with the topic of the day love versus attachments and i got to tell you an interesting context with this topic every once in a while i put this quote on my instagram and the quote goes something like this that attachment is a disease that we mistakenly label as love okay and i cannot tell you the kind of messages that i receive some of the most interesting messages are from those who feel offended by this quote and they tell me I love my attachments our attachments are what we live for how dare you write against the attachments and sometimes most of the times i would say people are very respectful and polite thankfully i don't have uh, super angry people i think most people just unfollow uh, which is good you know they're not feeling too intensely angry to write down hateful comments so the people who get offended by these kind of quotes they send me a message that you know why do you write this because our attachments are everything and i may have to unfollow you now because i feel this is not what you know spirituality is for me and this is why i, I always say that entire teaching about pick what resonates with you is not a right teaching because if i start picking only what resonates with my mind then i will not go beyond my mind so i have to pick what's not also resonating with my mind and challenge it question it and study it only then i'll know what's right for me so if you ever come across a teaching a wisdom nugget or whatever that that's not resonating with you don't blindly uh, reject it because maybe it's your conditioning or a fear or uh, some you know past memory that's interfering in the present moment uh, and stopping you to absorb the entire wisdom the lesson in that teaching so definitely take a pause and observe why are you reacting why it's not resonating with you and then move ahead with the right decision so i pay close attention to the comments 
or the suggestions or even the teachings that show up uh, in my journey and uh, when they are not resonating with me i definitely try to make a conscious effort and and not let the ego or the mind call the shots it's you know not easy all the time but it's definitely worth the effort and the more efforts you make the better you become at it yeah so love versus attachment so these are the kind of comments that i usually receive and uh, sometimes if someone is getting too attached with me on any level they send me a very angry message they'll tell me that oh i know you wrote it for me and i would explain why would i write it for you if i can write you directly why would i post it to thousands of followers on instagram and it's been happening since forever and i know why this is happening because it's the mind that starts this conversation and it's just so funny like i avoid talking about attachment sometimes because I, i know i just don't have the energy today to reply to all the messages and comments that will show up after this quote it's just a one line quote but it triggers a lot in people but it's also something i work on with my uh, relationship guidance program clients uh, and this is the program where we work almost every week it's for singles and couples and attachment is, uh, is a topic that continues to build and uh, extend itself through months and months in this program now before i start explaining the difference between love and attachment i have to define what is love and then define what is attachment okay there is uh, i think these two things are uh, very interesting because you can never uh, really define love and you can never really define attachment so that's one thing okay but here's how i understand love i don't look at love as a relationship i don't define love as a relationship because i feel love is not what we do love is what we really are love is a state of awareness it's a state of our conscious energy and love cultivates itself through meditation through compassion through accepting your existence and then extending that acceptance to others and love uh, definitely does not confine itself to only romantic or sexual attraction it goes way beyond that it may st- in romantic relationships love may start off as a physical or romantic or sexual you know attraction but it definitely does not end there it should not end there if it only revolves around that physical aspect then you're only digging one percent or maybe less than one percent of entire love okay now what is attachment attachment arises out of your mind you know we have a tendency to possess things we want to own things we want to copyright over things we want to have control over things and from that tendency attachment shows up because if you want to copyright your teachings your ideas your intellectual knowledge if you want to buy the property you want to own the material things so that same behavior also you know transfers itself to the relationships because after a certain point mind doesn't know if it's a human or a property it starts to treat a human like a property and you will you know find this a lot in human relationships sometimes uh, we behave like as if we own the another and sometimes we like that feeling that we are owned by someone and that comes across a lot in our body language in the way we address our partners in the way we you know label them in the way we feel uneasy when they are laughing or talking to someone else uh, the attachment keeps on showing up in different forms and if we don't understand the root of it it could actually destroy not only the relationship but also your energy of love your cultivation of that awareness which is love now here's an example that i often use with my clients i'll share it with you imagine a plastic rose and an original red rose and you put them together in your lobby from a distance they look the same okay and it's 
actually possible, the plastic rose may look a little more attractive because it's plastic. It's, you know, you could polish it the way you want it to be polished. It could look really red. It could look really sharp. So from a distance, maybe someone cannot even, you know, see a difference, which one is real and which one is fake. But after a week, you would clearly see which one is fake and real. The real one might be completely dead by end of one week. But the plastic one will not die because it was never alive to begin with. Then why do we keep the plastic roses in our lobby, in our, you know, the hotel lobbies have plastic roses sometimes or the offices that you may see plastic flowers there. Why do we keep that? Because there's no maintenance, they look good and uh, they serve the purpose of just, you know, having a decoration piece. Now, it works fine with the flowers, right? But when we start to treat our relationships in the same way, then problems start to happen. We treat our relationships like the way we are treating these plastic roses and the real roses. So many of our relationships are like those plastic roses. They are dead. They have no life within but they continue to look good to the others. And this is the only reason we are holding on to them. Because they look good to society. They look good to our family. They look good to others. And this is one of the reasons we continue to keep them. Because they look good. Why are we so afraid to let go of those dead relationships? Because maybe known devil is better than unknown devil. And you feel maybe, I know this devil, it's known to my mind. I know the problems of this devil. Maybe if I leave this one, I don't know what's going to be in the unknown. I don't know what's going to be the next step. The truth is, life thrives in the unknown. Life blooms in the unknown. And as long as you continue to chase the known, you are not going to give any courage, any life to your existence. Okay? If you want to live a life that's alive and blooming, you've got to embrace the unknown in your life. And there are so many relationships which have been dead since ages, but we are decorating them every day only because they serve that basic shallow purpose of relationships to show others that we are still good we are still fine, but you're not. And I, you know, tell this to people very often. If you want to become actors, don't waste your money in the acting school. Just get married. Because getting married teaches a lot of people how to act. Because I continue to come across people who have become great actors in their marriage. When they want to laugh, they don't laugh. When they want to cry, they don't cry, they smile instead. When one of them doesn't, you know, feel like making love, they are making love. They are doing tons of things which they don't want to do, but nobody can see that they don't want to do this because they have just become really great performers. They have become really great actors. And this is sad, this is tragic, right? But this is up to you. When you start to understand that your love is no more love, it has become just a product of attachment. You got to take the right decisions to either resolve it or to leave it or to discuss it deeply and then, you know, honor whatever shows up. If you don't address it, if you don't pay attention to it, then it will continue to drain you, exhaust you. And it, in many cases, it just starts to give you depression, psychological problems and Tons of crazy stuff. So again, taking the example of the plastic rose and the real rose. See, the thing is, love is so alive. And just like any alive thing, love will continue to evolve itself. It may start with a physical attraction. It may find its peak in the sexual passion. But then it will evolve from there. You know, from attraction to sex to friendship to understanding, it may go into deeper layers of consciousness. It may become the most important and profound meditation for you. 
but a true love will evolve it will find higher layers of awareness on the other hand the plastic rose or the attachment will never evolve because it was dead to begin with and i'll give you few pointers that you can hopefully use and meditate upon and find out for yourself how to really sail through this journey of love and attachment and make a decision for yourself okay number 1 love always arises from awareness the more aware you become the more you will cultivate love within yourself the more aware you become the more accessible your love becomes it's not selective anymore attachment on the other hand it arises from ego your ego tells you that you have to control this person you have to own this person and ego call the shots in attachment second point love allows the freedom freedom and love they go hand in hand you don't feel like you know tracking or controlling your partner you don't like to be controlled because in true love freedom is the very basic essence a lot of people ask me what if i give all the freedom to my partner and what if the partner abuses it you know if the partner abuses it then the partner is clearly telling you that there's no love happening here and you have to move on okay because it's not love at all when the partner is doing things on your you know back and you feel that you're controlling it because he or she is not doing it uh, you know in front of you so you really have to be very honest with yourself when you you know understand these principles love and freedom go hand in hand and when it comes to attachment it likes to control it likes to possess it likes to really track and manage your life okay because attachment does not enjoy that the other person is having their own life and they would want to really control what's going on okay number 3 love is unconditional and i have mentioned it many times that uh, there are no conditions in love you simply bloom as you are there are no transactions happening there it's absolute pure flow while attachment has conditions it will always you know bloom in conditions when there are no conditions attachment dies and in love you have complete trust over yourself and the other in love trust is effortless and i mentioned it many times if you want to heal you have to trust if you want to heal yourself and your partner you have to exchange that trust because when there is doubt attachment automatically steps in attachment loves doubt the more doubts start to show up in relationship the more control the more attachment the more ego will start to show up okay and finally in love there is no fear you know you take on the biggest risks because you have this fearlessness in you and in attachments the fears are always there there's always a certain fear fear of losing the other or fear of losing your own strength fear of losing your own meaning fear of losing your own existence some sort of fear keeps on showing up okay in nutshell anything that's showing up from the past or the projection of future that's going to revolve around attachments okay because love is in the present moment in present moment there is no fear no attachment no ego there's no fear in the present moment and things start to move in a very interesting way when you are in the present moment all right So this was a brief episode on love versus attachments and I truly hope you found something helpful for you and if you did definitely share this on your insta story and tag me and leave a review if you feel like okay thank you so much I hope this podcast may travel through the untapped universe of your darkness light courage passion and so much more Please do subscribe and be ready to break your norms. 
I am so excited and very honored to be part of your sacred journey through this podcast.